Mark Rogers TV back with you running down the best players in college football. We're looking at the ACC and we are looking at the running back position and it's pretty loaded. I was impressed with the quarterback list once we dove into that conversation. Now we're talking running backs and we've got a full forum for you folks. So this is a nice little panel here. Uh, we've got uh, Jim Hammett of uh, Cardiac Hill for Pitt. We've got uh, Joey Weaver from the Rumble Seat talking Georgia Tech football on SB Nation as well. Jeff Greenberg from Sports Glutton repping North Carolina. And we also have Dan Rubin from BC Interruption. Gentlemen, this should be a nice little discussion. So we're going to carve through the top five for each one of you. I may have a few little comments to make. And um, we may have a little discussion and debate as well. So, Jim, why don't we start with you? Well, uh, my list is pretty easy. Uh, you know, I, I'm going to go with my guy, uh, James Conner, at number one. Uh, and it really wasn't even all that close for me. He's, a, the, he's the reigning ACC player of the year at 1,600 yards, 24 touchdowns. Uh, his numbers kind of, you know, they can stack up against uh, Tony Dorsett or Curtis Martin, some of the pair running back rates. So his season was one for the ages. So me uh, starting him with number one was rather easy. Number two, I'm going with Alvin Cook of Florida State. Uh, you know, played, uh, split some carries last year, but still managed to get 900 yards. And, and you know with that offense, with the new quarterback breaking in, he's going to have opportunities. And, uh, you know, I think he, he's a good complement. Those are probably my top two. And I think there's a little bit of a drop-off after those two. I have Wayne Allen of Clemson. I like his versatility, his speed, uh, 24 receptions out of the backfield. I really think he's, he can bring a lot to that Clemson, uh, that Clemson offense. Number four, uh, this one's kind of about potential. Not quite sure what he's all about. It's uh, Joseph Yerby of Miami. Uh, kind of kind of hidden behind Duke Johnson last year, but he definitely has some talent. Managed to get 400 yards when Duke was uh, banged up a little bit. So I think with an expanded role, I think he's going to do well. And uh, closing it out, I have John Hillman, sophomore out of BC, 12 touchdowns as a freshman. I, I think he's, he's going to be due for a big year and could be that next great uh, Boston College back. All right, Jim, nice little list there. Yeah, I think James Conner has kind of, kind of distinguished himself. I've got a top 10 national list coming out here, hopefully pretty soon, and he's going to factor in there very nicely. All right, uh, we got Joey uh, coming up with your top five here. What do you got for us, Joey? Sure, so I'll actually start with an honorable mention. Uh, I'm going to go with Wayne Gallman as an honorable mention kind of guy. Uh, didn't, you know, kind of a younger guy. I didn't feel like he uh, really kind of, Warranted that game controlling, you know, running back at a la a Connor or a Cook was maybe last year, but definitely got to keep an eye on. Could be very good. I think number five for me uh, is John Hilleman, guy that was just mentioned by Jim there. Um, a guy that's did a lot as a true freshman last year at Boston College, uh, maybe red true freshman. Sorry about that, but um, guy that really projects well in the future with Steve Adazio's offense with what they do. I think that he's got a lot of potential moving forward. Uh, number four, I've got Joseph Yearby, uh, Miami. Again, kind of backed up Duke Johnson last year, but really did a lot. Um, had 500 carries on, you know, less than 100, uh, less than 100, or excuse me, 500 yards on less than 100 carries. Uh, nearly six yards per carry. Very, very uh, electric back. Can do a lot of things. Uh, number three, I got Shadrach Thornton at NC State. Uh, Going to be a senior this year. Um, really did a lot again last year. Had 900 yards uh, and about five and a half per carry. Um, he's going to be one of the better forces in the ACC. And then uh, going with Jim on, on two and one here, number two is Dalvin Cook. Uh, again, another guy that kind of – he kind of backed up Carlos Williams at Florida State a lot you know, last year, and then this year it's going to be his show. And, uh, and I think he's a really explosive, uh, explosive guy who can basically take any ball to the house at any given time. Uh, made it over 1,000 yards last year on only 170 carries. Uh, nearly six yards per carry. So, again, I expect big things from him. And then number one is the obvious one, uh, James Conner. He's the workhorse. And, and like some of the guys he's comparing, you know, being compared to there by Jim is, um, you know, almost 300 carries. That led the conference. 1,700 yards. That led the conference. 26 touchdowns. That led the conference. Um, I think it's more the same from him. And, uh, and I expect the same, you know, even with a new coach in there, Pat Narduzzi, I think it's all, it's all going to be the same. James Conner, definitely number one in the ACC. All right, we got a trend started here with uh, the top two with Connor and Cook. Would love to hear you guys uh, take on one thing here, looking at supporting cast. So are you guys trying to, to, to figure out who's the best running back here based on sheer ability, just 
talking about that particular player, or are we looking at supporting cast and seeing what the production is going to be, if they've got a great offensive line, if they have weapons on the outside that are going to take uh, the pressure outside the box, those sorts of things, are, are those things going to factor in, and are you looking at numbers and what you expect the numbers to be, or this kid could have the worst offensive line in the world, but I just think he's the best running back in the ACC, that sort of thing. So there's different ways to look at it. All right, Jeff, uh, top five running backs in the ACC, what do you have for us? Well, it's interesting you said that because uh, I think my top two that are similar to everybody else's are just based on who they are and what they're going to do and what they have done. I mixed it up a little bit with my next three, more on what you were just talking about, sort of based on maybe what I think is going to happen this year because of what's around them maybe compared to the last year or two. So my honorable mentions were, um, and this will be a surprise and you'll hear why after, uh, Thornton from NC State, Radcliffe from Louisville, and Powell from Duke. My number five running back is actually T.J. Logan at UNC, a junior, and this comes into what you just mentioned. Is this about maybe looking forward potential? His freshman year, he was very dynamic. He had a really good offensive line. Last year, UNC's offensive line was patchwork at best, um, plugging in a lot of new people. This year, they're all they're all back, including um, Landon Turner and Crowley, the center, who are both getting preseason accolades. I think with a better line and a more solid offensive line, Logan could have another year uh, like he did his freshman year. The big question mark, I mean, last year, too, he still had, you know, six, 700 yards. But last year, um, we they had to go more with, actually, Williams running. I think this year you'll be able to see the running game hopefully be a little more effective with a better line. Um, the only question mark with putting Logan is, is he is going to split times with Elijah Hood. So that could be interesting. Um, my number four guy, and this was my curveball, why I put Thornton, honorable mention, is actually Matt Days at NC State. And the reason I put him in is more based on, again, what he is as a total player. He's a running back, kick returner, and wide receiver. He actually had 1,300 total yards last year, 13 touchdowns, 5.5 yards per carry. But he is, because of transfers, he's actually their top re uh, returning receiver with over 30 catches. So I think as a total running back, he may surprise people this year. He's got the speed. He's got the ability. And Thornton has not yet shown to be able to play a whole season without having some issues, whether it's injuries or, or off-the-field stuff. And I really think NC State, particularly because of question marks at receiver, are going to be really dependent on that running game, both from uh, Jacoby Brissett, Thornton, and Days. I think Days may have one of those years that could be big for the Wolfpack. Um, number three, I've got... Clemson's Wayne Gallman, uh, I think someone mentioned earlier, but he closed the year strong, uh, about 600 yards over the last six games. Again, he's good out of the backfield. He's got the athletic talent. Uh, the question mark, like we talked about with the quarterback situation at Clemson, is going to be the three offensive linemen they're trying to put into place and how quickly they come into um, form. The good news for Gallman is that he's got a running back. They can throw the ball, move the ball, run the ball, and that should always help move along that offensive line and maybe free, uh, free up some space for him because the target's going to be stopping Watson and not necessarily stopping the running game. My number two is Dalvin Cook from Florida State. Uh, repeating a lot of what uh, the earlier guy said, 5.9 yards per carry. Um, he actually had 177 yards in that ACC title game and was the title game MVP. I think uh, they're going to need him to solidify that offense as they break in whichever quarterback they're going to give the starting nod to. I think a lot's going to be put on his shoulders early in the season. And based on his freshman year, I think his sophomore year has the potential to be able to carry that load until the quarterback gets in the, gets in the a rhythm. And then number one, I think it's very easy for everybody. I, I think it's you're exactly right. He should be in the top ten nationally. Um, he's definitely the returning ACC player of the year, but that's James Conner at Pitt. Uh, to say something a little different than the other guys did, I think it was I saw right up on him how uh, he's athletic enough to they even consider putting him on defensive end on in, a, in certain speed rush situations. And I'll tell you, I don't know what would be more intimidating for a defensive player to have to tackle someone projected as a defensive end running the ball as fast and as powerful as he does. So I think the fact that he's just a physical freak um, is is the reason he's number one. My good story about him is I was sitting with a few coaches in a, on another team last year at the uh, before the UNC pit game started, and we were kind of monitoring it on the Internet, and one of the coaches said that, you know, Connor's probably going to have 200 yards today, and I think 
first drive, might even be the first run. He had a long run for a touchdown right out of the gates. So he lived up to his billing. I think that's what was huge for Connor last year is he was the focus of every defense, and he still racked up the yards like no other. So number one, clear and far, is James Connor at Pitt. And, Jeff, I'm going to hesitate and not this week pick on the North Carolina defense and say that was more North Carolina defense than it was James Conner. But, yeah, James Conner, crazy, 26 touchdowns. I actually have him rated number four in the country uh, in my top ten nationally. Uh, I don't think there's any question. If you if we're rating who was the best in 2014, he's the guy. Is Dalvin Cook going to make that leap this year without uh, some of the competition he's had last year as a freshman at running back because he could make the big leap. But Connor, uh, based on sheer production, that he's just a hammer uh, running into the middle of the defense. All right, Dan, uh, we, you're breaking the trend here. We got uh, Jim, Joey, and Jeff. Uh, but Dan, uh, you're the oddball now. Let's let's see what you got. You got a wild card or two for us. Oh, I, I can I can give you a wild card, and I'm actually going to be the uh, the oddball out on this whole thing with my top five. And uh, I don't know if I give away my top one when I say that, but so I'll just start right there. I actually have Dalvin Cook as my number one running back. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna throw it out there and be totally off the board when I say that. And and, and here's my reason why. Cook, uh, his stats, if you look at the season long, maybe don't jump off the paper. Um, but I say that in a sense of that he did have a hundred yards in his last three games. The 177 yards against Georgia Tech in the championship game was uh, was fantastic, and he averaged once he's finally started getting his touches something like 108 yards on the road in road games. He didn't play that much at the beginning of the year, uh, but then after he got his touches and after he really worked in um, on sheer athleticism, I, I actually put him as my as my number one. Uh, obviously, that means I have James Conner number two, and. I think that the Pitt offense is, is probably one of the more underrated offenses that we'll see this year. Um, they have a, a system that, that tends to work, and, and Connor, you know, I, I got a chance to watch him last year, and he's, he's virtually untackleable if you try to form tackle or go up high, but at the same time, he's, uh, he's, not, the type, he's not the type of guy, I should say, you can form tackle him. You can get him low. You got to try to wrap him up. Uh, but if you try to hit him and take him head on, which is kind of a problem in the college game, uh, probably a discussion for another day. But if you try to go head to head with him, he's going to run you over. I think Dalvin Cook brings a slightly different type of athleticism, which is why I have him at number one in the running game. But then I do have Connor number two. Uh, number three, I put uh, Boston College's John Hilleman. Uh, you have to understand with, with John Hilleman mm -hmm. is that as a freshman, he wasn't the only running back. He, he had 860 yards. He had 148 in a bowl game loss to Penn State. He had 128 in a loss to Colorado State. Uh, but he's a guy who wasn't the feature back. The feature back was the quarterback, Tyler Murphy. Uh, they were running nearly an entirely option offense, a spread option at some points during the year. Uh, and Hilleman was a, was a power back who was able to get around the corner. Uh, he resembles Andre Williams, but at the same time, he has a second gear, which Andre Williams just used sheer brute strength. And John Hilleman's going to potentially have a higher ceiling than a Heisman Trophy finalist um, in an offense that didn't have a, a great offensive line last year coming into the season. Uh, he has the same this year with a bunch of guys who just simply haven't played together. Um, number four, I had Shadrach Thornton from NC State. Um, I feel that offense is extremely underrated. Uh, I think he's the feature back. If he can stay on the field, he might be one of the best all-around uh, running backs, the, the guy that you give him the ball and, and let him do his thing. Uh, but at the same time, uh, I did give an honorable mention in that to Matt Days because for the same reasons that Jeff mentioned, uh, you know, he's the type of guy that can catch out of the backfield, be that utility back that is so important into the, uh, into the new style of football. You're not just going to give the ball to one guy and, get the heck out of the way, but Thornton does have the ability to do that, but the question for me is, does he stay on the field, and for me, my number five, nobody had him, and I'm, I'm kind of pumped nobody had him, uh, Taekwon Mizell, uh, or Mizell, I, I know I'm butchering his last name, from the University of Virginia, uh, he had 500 yards rushing and 500 yards receiving as a reserve uh, the last couple of seasons, he's a five-star recruit, it's his backfield this year. I think on, on pure athleticism, he's a guy that I was kind of worried about stepping into the Virginia game and redefining uh, the Virginia offense. Uh, Virginia is a, a team that uh, honestly could scare a couple teams if, they, if they're if they able to, to piece the right things together, and I think he's going to be a, a big piece of that. 
Uh, obviously, some of the names I left off, guys like Gallman and and the like, they're uh, they're certainly worth mentioning. But oh boy, it sure is hard to overlook a five star recruit for me. Dan, we were waiting to see who would make the first disputable homer pick, and, and so the award goes to you with Hilleman at number three. You're you're all very welcome. I'm wicked homer. That's what I say all the time. All right. Uh, before I kick it to Jim for one quick question here, Delvin Cook, I think it's interesting to note the good and the bad. So down the stretch, 144 against a Florida defense that, although the Gators were down overall, still a very good run defense. 177 against Georgia Tech in the ACC championship game. And then he put up 103 and only 15 carries against the Ducks in the uh, playoff game. But on the downside, it was an 18-13 game in the third quarter, and Delvin Cook had two crucial fumbles uh, that kind of helped let the game slip away from Florida State. Jim, quick question for you on uh, Connor. Obviously, he's the brute force. He's the central figure on this offense, but Chad Boytick should be a much better quarterback this year. We saw him improve down the stretch, and, and Pitt give him the reins to throw it a little bit more uh, the last half of the season. Do you expect a better offense, even if Connor's numbers suffer a little bit? I think they're, they're going to be a little more versatile on offense. Uh, I, I think they're going to, you know, maybe Jim Cheney, he came from Arkansas, the offensive coordinator. He had two 1,000-yard backs last year. So he knows about splitting up the carries. And Pitt has a capable uh, backup, former four-star recruit, Chris James. So I think, in a sense, Connor's numbers are going to dip a little bit because they're going to worry about his legs. Uh, you know, he, he's a professional career to think about. And, and they do have a, they have a more experienced quarterback in Chad Wood. They're going to give him the ball more. And, of course, you have an All-American receiver in Tyler Boyd. So I think they're going to open things up. I don't think it's just going to be pound Connor 35 times a game and that's it. There's going to be a little more diversity in the offense for sure. Joey, you lose your uh, two uh, main running backs, even though Justin Thomas led the team in rushing. Uh, do you have any hope for anybody stepping up this year? Yeah, a real interesting situation. Uh, top three B-backs all graduated, and then the heir apparent tore his ACL in spring practice. So... Uh, it's kind of a makeshift situation right now. The the main uh, starting B-back at this point looks to be Marcus Allen, who came in as a B-back and then spent the last two years as a linebacker. Uh, going along with him as a transfer from Stanford, Patrick Scove. Um, it's it's really it's it's kind of up in the air what we're going to get from the B-back position this year from Georgia Tech. Um, I think at A-back, the one guy to keep an eye out for is Broderick Snotty. A uh, guy who also ran track at Georgia Tech is very, very quick uh, at the A back position. Uh, he had a he put together a few very good games against uh, one against Pittsburgh, and I think he was having a really good game against uh, Clemson before he broke his leg. Um, and so I, I think he comes back this year, and I think there's a chance that uh, he he gets a little bit of a focus from the A back position. But it's definitely an interesting situation this fall. Last year, Justin Thomas, brand new quarterback, got all sorts of senior uh, star power around him at the skill positions. This year, it's it's a m more matter of what can Justin Thomas do with the guys around him, uh, really taking that next step as a quarterback. So, uh, real real interested to see how things turn out, uh, particularly with all those skill positions. I haven't seen him play, but for some reason I like this Marcus Allen kid at running back. I think he's got a future. Maybe I can foresee him reversing his field and running for a big touchdown in the Super Bowl or something. Um, uh, between Dan forward. and Jeff, what's, what's that, Joey? Certainly has the name for it. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, between Dan and Jeff, either anyone within the conference that's off the radar that you guys like or maybe with your individual team, somebody we don't know about, um, that uh, could break free and uh, uh, onto the scene either this fall or in 2016. Dan, we'll start with you. Well, I'll uh, I'll, I'll defer on the I'll punt on the uh, on the the, the conference wide because anytime the guy comes from out of nowhere, it's always uh, you look at it and everybody is uh, who who is from another team said where did they find this guy? So uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna punt on that. But I know uh, from the from the Boston College standpoint, I'm really high on Marcus Outlow. Uh, shake to his friends uh, is his nickname, and because he is capable of of shaking out of uh, of tackles, he's the type of guy that you know has a similar build to John Hilleman, a little bit smaller, a little less power, uh, but is a little bit more agile, therefore, and has a little bit more speed. They both have a second gear. Uh, was part of a great running back class that that came in as freshmen last year. Uh, didn't play as much as I would have liked to have seen him last year, but. Uh, I'm sure when Outlaw gets his chance, he's uh, he's the type of guy that can that can go up the middle, spring it outside, get that extra step, and a, a little bit of thunder and lightning uh, potentially coming out of the backfield for Boston College, uh, provided they they utilize him in the right strength and the, we use the right strengths with these guys the right way. 
Okay, Jeff, anybody in Carolina Blue or around the ACC that you like that uh, we're not talking about? I think Carolina-wise, Elijah Hood will be a name to watch this year, former five-star recruit. Uh, he had moments of uh, good things happen last year. He did suffer some injuries last year, but he's a – where T.J. Logan is more of the shifty, fast guy out in space, Hood is more the Connor-type runner where I think his coaches say he looks for the contact as opposed to – Running around people, he likes to find contact. He's going to be a name to watch just to see how it goes. Um, plus, they, they share the ball around, so it's going to be interesting to see what kind of season Logan and Hood have with an improved offensive line. The name that's – it's not a new name, but just a name to keep an eye on at Duke is Shaq Powell, upperclassman. But when they're, they're going through a moment right now where they're going to have to break in a new quarterback, and Cutcliffe is an offensive mastermind, he's going to find a way to get the ball moving. And if the quarterback's not doing it early on in the year – uh, Shaq Powell might be the one they lean on a little bit. It's a very smart guy. I think he's a three-time All-ACC academic uh, player. So he's a smart player, and I think he's going to know his role and be able to use it well. And he's an upperclassman, so putting the pressure on him is not going to hurt. So, yeah, Shaq Powell with 618 rushing, 4.6 per carry, two touchdowns, but he's finished really strong in the Sun Bowl against Arizona State with 117 yards. I don't believe anybody mentioned Brandon Radcliffe from Louisville. Uh, he got off to a slow start, didn't see much action with 23 carries in his first four games, finished with 12 rushing touchdowns, three 100-yard efforts, and a 136 game against Notre Dame. Uh, a lot of you guys uh, have Shadrach Thornton in your top five. He finished really strong with 110, 161, and 96 into the bowl win against Central Florida. Uh, Gallman with a 169 effort in the finale in the regular season against South Carolina. And uh, Virginia Tech splits carries, at least at this point, with Marshawn Williams, who ran for 475 and four touchdowns, who missed four games, and J.C. Coleman, who ran for 533 and three touchdowns, but finished really strong against Virginia and in the bowl win over Cincinnati with 118 and 157. All right, it is Dan Rubin of BC Interruption. It's Jeff Green of Sports Glutton, Jim Hammett of Cardiac Hill, and also Joey Weaver of from the Rumble Seed. Guys, we appreciate uh, the insight and the information. Thanks for having us.